Hello and welcome back to Cal Radio at War. And I've just arrived to save this caravan from certain doom against uh, Mr. Louis Chan's party here, as well as someone else who's actually ganging up on them. And I, I personally don't feel like this is a very fair fight, so why not? Let's go in there and see what we can do. Now, I actually loaded up the game today and um, I found something rather disconcerting. I did not save, apparently, from the previous episode, so if I have forgotten to do anything, or in general, if um, I, I don't know, I, I just loaded up and I had an autosave, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, that's not right, because I always save before I I quit, uh, but yeah, that's the point, a uh, bit, bit strange. Anyway, hopefully nothing has been missed, because basically all that I did that was not saved was spec my point into steward and I've done that again so that shouldn't really make any difference whatsoever but I just thought I'd let you know about that so if you do see anything that is a little bit different than last time then that's the reason anyway let's see what we can do here 132 against 119 units I'm very much hoping I will be able to get a couple of kills with my pole arm here even if I'm able to do damage to the horse that is still a, uh, a net gain, I guess, that is still pretty decent to do because if I'm able to do some damage at all, that is always much better than dealing zero. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to try and do here. We're going to go into shield wall because generally we are gaining so many bonuses from going into shield wall that it is uh, it's basically much worse to stay in line formation even if there is a spear brace mechanic in... Um, in place you know I mean generally yes we will be doing some spear bracing later down the line once I have um, well a much larger army at the moment my army is not that large once I have about maybe 250 units then I should be able to have some pretty significant forces to be able to make that work and also do bear in mind we'll then have the opportunity to fight larger armies as well because at the moment we are not really capable of fighting anything too large i think it would be very ill-advised to do that but oh wow we're doing we're doing a lot of damage right here actually and amazingly enough this bill hook is well it's performing pretty nice right now it's performing pretty well and you can see here i'm knocking people off their mount i'm um i'm keeping them busy i'm, I'm eliminating a couple of them as well and bear in mind these are obviously part of the minor faction I personally feel like the minor factions should probably stay down in their um, in their territory wherever it may be, whether that be, you know, Sturgeon territory or in these cases Azariah territory. I feel like I don't know. It's it seems kind of weird to see them here, if you know what I mean. It seems kind of strange because, well, they are generally desert-based units, but obviously they can join whoever they want. Uh, it's just a bit bit weird to see them fighting for the Batanians. That's all. Anyway, let's see if we can maybe continue doing some damage here. I've told my forces to charge in now, so hopefully my infantry will be able to do something. And I now have 241 in pole arms. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get to 250 in this episode, if we can. And there's some wonderful relation increases too. Yes, we really do want to get those relation increases as much as we possibly can. And there we go. Fantastic. We did suffer a couple of casualties, but my influence gain is fantastic. That's really, really good. And we're going to be letting these guys go, just generally. And what about this guy? He already kind of... Oh, he's the leader. Aho. Uh -oh. Okay. That is actually really, really good to know. Ah, yes. That's the thing I did not do. I did not sell my prisoners. Yes. That is the one thing that I have forgotten to do. Oh, well. That is kind of... Uh, that's kind of sad. That is actually kind of sad. Anyway, we're going to get rid of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 units, and then we're just going to take everything that is a little bit higher. And then we're going to take some of the loot as well. I should probably just take a look at this. This is a really nice sword, in my opinion. It is a little bit slower. Oh, no. It's actually faster. Yes, I, th I think I'm going to replace my other sword with this. And then we're going to see if there's anything else here that I really want to take. Mm, doesn't seem like it. So I will just take the rest for selling and things like that. All right. So in this episode, I would actually like to take Sionan if at all possible. You can see here, however, that Kaladog has a very large army. Now, Sion, uh, I mean, I say only, but they have 383 in the garrison. Now, their militia is 290 of that. So I personally think we would 
maybe be able to pull this off. Maybe. And that that's a very very preliminary thought on my part because I'm thinking, well, may, maybe we'll be able to do it. I mean, maybe I need to just take a quick look at the um, at the combat strength first whenever we go in there at some point and uh, then maybe that's going to give me a better idea as to whether we can actually pull it off. But that is my... That is my thought process right now. That is the thing that I would like to do in this episode. So if we can make it work, then I will be very pleased. If we can't, well, then that's just how it's going to have to be, unfortunately. Okay, so yeah, I don't want to recruit anyone from here. Thank you very much. We are just going to be selling everything that I can. There we go. There's another 8,700. We're doing okay in terms of our cash. Not too bad. And my steward skill has, of course, leveled up as well. Okay, so all troops gain... Plus two daily experience and garrison wages of 5% less, right? And tier four plus troops gain four daily experience and plus one militia per day. Uh, yeah, militia, I guess. Militia is the way to go there, I suppose. Anyway, we also have 50 points in leadership now. And additional four morale at the beginning of the battle when you are attacking... Okay, and increase the rate of recruiting tier 1, 2, 3 prisoners by 50%. That's pretty good. And additional 8 morale at the beginning of the battle when you are defending. Uh, I'm probably going to take the attacking one generally because most of the time we are going to just be recruiting tier 1, 2, 3 prisoners anyway. And, I mean, we're not really recruiting prisoners in the, in the, in the first place. So I'm actually just going to go for fervent attacker because most of the time we are indeed attacking. So yeah, that's what we, that's what we've done there. All right, so uh, yeah, apart from that, I did say in the previous episode that I would like to take Glintor Castle or Druimor Castle. So maybe what we should do is go over there and see if we can maybe land a little bit of a distraction for Mr. Caladog. Although I would like to speak to this guy. Oh, I can send Oh, I can send a messenger. Really? I can send a messenger to him already? Okay, that's very that's very interesting. I uh, thought he would take a lot longer to restore himself. Let's just say that. And now let's have a look. He's still happy with him, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to just take a quick look here. He has friends. Is Caladog among them? I I am not seeing... Oh, no, there he is. All right. Yeah, he is a friend of his. So he obviously has a very large positive relation gain with him at the moment, which is... Unfortunate, because he's the guy that owns Sionan, if you can believe it. Yeah, he's the guy that owns Sionan. So it would be fantastic if we could actually get something going there between between the two of them. And that's also a reason why, as I mentioned in the previous episode, it would be kind of cool to have spies, because what you could then do is you could, you could kind of have those curv covert actions that spies could take. So, for example, you could have a spy go undercover to sabotage the relations between two vassals. So, for example, with Mr. Louishan right there and with Caladog, you could make it so that they become enemies over time. Maybe they lose two relation per, I don't know, per three days or something like that. You know, just to make it balanced in some way or another. Anyway, I'm going to just go in here real quick because I'd actually like to... Okay, apparently they don't have anything like that. I would like to check to see whether they have any good... Wow. That is a... That is a fantastic weapon. The War Razor. Yeah, the War Razor. Okay, I'm actually thinking I will get this War Razor, mainly because if you take a look at it, look at this thing right now. It literally has the opportunity to use spear bracing, and it also has the opportunity to use slashing attacks. You can also use it on a mount. However, it is 77,000 gold, which is very expensive. However, I think that is probably going to be worth it. I might sell Sentinel here because, in my opinion, I don't really like Sentinel that much. So I'm going to sell that and just kind of minimize the amount of money that I'm going to lose here. And we're going to then spend 50, 59,000, which is not too bad. And I was actually hoping that we might be able to find a companion here as well. That was the main reason why I came into the town because I thought, oh, let's find a companion to maybe create another caravan, you know, because at the moment I think I only have two caravans up and running and I think I could gain more trade skill by having more caravans. I mean, obviously that is logical to assume that. Anyway, let's go over here and I am going to equip the war razor. We can unequip this other thing now. And generally what I could do is if I wanted to, 
I could now completely unequip my shield. So if I didn't want a shield, I could unequip it. And then I could just have the war razor and then a bow or a crossbow and then a bunch of ammunition. So we could theoretically turn ourselves into a ranged character if we wanted to. Not entirely sure if that's going to work because obviously I have very little skill in that. And as it stands right now, gaining attribute points is a bit of a bit of a chore at the moment, which is somewhat unfortunate. But uh, yes, in general, you can download a mod that allows you to get one attribute point per level and you can modify that to your liking. However, I wanted to have a bit more of a classic native experience in this particular series. So that's the reason why I didn't do that uh, this time around. Ooh, the combat strength is looking pretty bad for us, actually. Huh. Well, I wonder why that is, to be honest. I, I really wonder why that is. Okay, well, let, let's just try and level up our engineering. I mean, if it, if it actually levels up at all there it is <laughs> why is why does it take so long i guess because i got nothing in intelligence right yeah i have nothing in intelligence in real life and in the game yes indeed okay so we do have alsea here who is potentially going to attack oh okay okay fine yeah i'm not going to be able to complete this in time unfortunately i will be able to fight both of these though but as you can no doubt tell caladog is giving them some pretty good backup I would love to be able to attack both of these vassals without Kaladog's assistance. So I will see if I can maybe bait them away from him. Ah, oh, there's Mr. Fennigan. I would like to speak to you, sir. Don't run into Sionan. You ran into Sionan. Yes, of course you did. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, perfection. That is what we call perfection. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, so this is really, really good. This is actually perfect, I would say. So you can see here, even though we are outnumbered, I have a lot of confidence in being able to achieve victory here because we have just defeated Mr. Mengus, as you can see. He has a very, very low tier army and I shouldn't have too many difficulties. I'm actually kind of worried about my own forces. No, no, my own forces are perfectly fine. As you can see, we have some pretty high tier units, so, so we shouldn't really have to worry about that at all. I was kind of worried about it because I thought to myself, why are they so confident in their in their actions right now? Why are they attempting to attack me so, so dramatically here? But they seem to just be relying on their numbers, and that is the main thing. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to using this War Razor. It's been a long time since I've used one of these. And the last time that I think I used one was back in the Kuzate Carnate series with um, with young Byron, technically. You know, it's the same, same name, obviously. Yes, the same name. Okay, so otherwise, we need to check our... Okay, they're very far away. <laughs> I don't know why they're so far, but okay. They seem to be uh, very, uh, well, uh, maybe a little bit too cautious considering they are the ones that uh, that decided to pursue us. But this War Razor is going to give me so many options. It really will. I mean, look at, look at the reach on this thing. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, obviously, I'm not really that proficient with using it just yet because <laughs> uh, I haven't used one of these in a long time. But you see how much damage I'm able to do with this thing? It's just crazy. It is very slow, though. So if I get shot while I'm using it or something like that, I am going to get interrupted every single time. So obviously, that's a uh, big drawback as a result of it. But it can also be used as a thrusting weapon as well if you spear brace with it. I also feel like this is one of those weapons that should really have the ability to crush through shields because you are hitting for so much damage that generally you should be able to crush through at least a little bit. I'm not, not, not talking about like a 100% chance or anything like that, but just a little bit because obviously the sheer force that you are you know exerting against these, uh, these enemies is so dramatic that you'd think that it would be, you know, pretty deadly to anyone, whether they're holding a shield or not. Look at that damage. Oh, I love that. Oh, War Razor. Where have you been? Where have you been all my life? In this campaign, at least. <laughs> ah, yes. This is this is fantastic. This is really nice. Even though I'm still, some of the time, not really able to get one-hit kills, it is really so enjoyable to use.
there we have it. Nice. We actually finally reached 250 pole arms, so I should be able to get a wonderful new perk in just a second. And there you go. We ended up only losing five units, which is really, really good. And we can now... Um, I'm actually going <laughs> to... I'm actually going to take Mr. Mangus prisoner once again. And who is Alsea actually the part of... She's part of Melody. Mm -hmm. She's part of Melody's clan, so I will be letting her go because we want as much relation with that clan as we can get our hands on. And then we're going to be able to take a number of prisoners too, which is always nice. Okay, anything else here? Anything else? Uh, this pole arm is pretty good, but nothing really to write home about. And what else do we have here? Not much. Okay, so we'll just take the rest of the loot to sell. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what Caladog is actually doing here. I'm not entirely sure if I have any kind of escape route right now. I mean, technically, I could go over to Lagatha. That would probably be the closest and safest way for me to go. Or I could just turn all the way around and not even worry about him because he seems to be going in the opposite direction. I would assume that he's going to besiege Daldorn Castle. Isn't he? Yes. As you can no doubt tell, yes, he is indeed attempting to do that, which is very, very predictable of him. But what am I supposed to do about it? I mean, I really can't stop him from doing it, can I? So... It is just going to have to be a thing that will go through if he decides to do it. Anyway, increases your handling of sing swingable pole arms, not single pole arms, but swingable pole arms by 15%. And infantry troops in the formation you are leading have their pole arms skill increased by 20, which is actually fantastic. What else do we have? Thrusting attacks have 5% increased damage. And infantry troops in the formation you're leading have their thrust damage increased by 5%. I'm going to be going for this because pole arm skill in general is going to be helping their... Their speed is going to be helping their thrusting damage, is going to be helping their slashing damage. In general, it's just going to help overall in comparison to 5%. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Even though 20 skill is not the same as 5%, it is still a decent thing. And we're also going to be increasing our handling by 15%. And because I'm using a swinging pole arm right now, it's kind of useful. Anyway, we also have another point in riding here if you join an ongoing battle of your allies your party starts with plus 10 battle morale that's pretty good and also mounted troops in the government's go governed settlements uh, garrison provide 20 percent more security it's the only choice so pretty easy all right so let me actually just take a quick look here because i'm not entirely sure how many units are even in daldorn castle because if i have a good amount in there 106 that could be enough for us to maybe make a bit of a retaliatory strike against Caladog's army when he's done. Maybe? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it will be uh, maybe it will be viable. Anyway, I'm going to wait a minute. Let me actually just take a quick look at her skills. Okay, yeah, she has pretty pretty awful skills. So we're just going to take her and then create a wonderful wonderful caravan. There we go. And she's going to go off and do that. Thank you very much. And then, hopefully, we will be able to get back to Daldorn Castle. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure where our armies are. Okay, Vol Volarex army is over there. Uh, Inveth Castle is under siege. Durthart's army. Okay, so they're obviously wanting to expand over in this direction. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world for them to do that, to be honest. That is the logical way to go about expansion because obviously it is the most connected to their to their land you know because obviously Velucard is here we have ox hall just a stone's throw away as well it makes all the sense however the way that we're doing things up here not really making that much sense sargeth would be really good to go for but yeah obviously that's that's very very difficult to accomplish i would say Okay, let me just take a quick look. Okay, nothing else to go for. Okay, so I'm just basically going to wait and see what happens. And I would assume he's going to lose so many units here that I might even be able to go in when he gets a little bit weaker. Okay, so is he is he kind of weak now? Let me actually just take a look and see what he has. He has a lot of Batanian heroes. They might be very difficult to deal with. He has a lot of Beni Zilal uh, royal guards. They're also going to be kind of difficult to deal with. He has Batanian Fians. Does he have any champions? I don't see any champions right now. Hmm. Because he doesn't have any champions, I'm kind of inclined to think that maybe I should just go for it. I mean, 
I'm gonna lose this castle in a second if I don't go in. Really, really soon. I mean, we've got 48 still in there, but sometimes the AI likes to sort of jump ahead a bit. So we should be a bit... Okay, you know what? Let's have a rule here, okay? If Caladog gets down to 200 units, I will go in. But if my castle gets taken, well, then I'll go in anyway. But yeah, generally 200 units is going to be the limit. Ah, yeah, as you can see, he's already gone in there. Okay, sh sh should I try it? I mean, I think I should, right? I think I should, because look, look at him right now. He's got 203. I think we should be able to achieve victory here. Now, even though my combat strength is quite clearly showing that we are in the disadvantage, I think we will still have a good opportunity to win. So let's see whether I can actually make that a reality. So let me move my infantry forward, move my archers forward as well. And let's see what we can do. Okay, so the enemy is quite far away as it is, so I think we have a decent amount of time to get set up. And we are going to be taking a very defensive position here as well. I'm going to be moving my archers into a loose formation. And we're also going to get our cavalry out over here, I guess. Doesn't really matter where they go, to be honest. And I'm going to get my war razor out, but not just yet, because I do want to try and defend myself against any projectiles that are flying my way. As you can see, they are utilizing a couple of... Oh, hello there. Someone was wanting to go by and give me a wonderful hit-and-run attack. That was not very nice of them, but they're well. Never mind. Hopefully, they're not going to get anything from us here. Nice hit. Ooh, ooh, did you see that? That was a nice thrust, but unfortunately, it was a little off the mark. So we're causing so much morale damage right now that that is literally the only reason why we are achieving anything here because if you are able to kill enemy units in quick succession of each other, you're going to deal so much morale damage in the process that many of them will decide to run away. And that is exactly what is happening here, especially considering they have just been in a siege. Bear that in mind. They've just been in a siege. They're a little bit tired. Their morale might have taken a couple of hits from losing so many units in that siege itself because, I mean, let's face it, he lost, I think, around 200 units in that siege itself and that is a huge hit to his morale overall and that's obviously the main reason why we were able to achieve victory here. And I believe that is probably going to be it for now. I'm, I, I could potentially get a couple more kills here so I'm going to just try and stick around a little bit, try and pick off a couple of these cavalry that are trying to fly by me right now maybe i can oh nice we actually eliminated one of the enemy vassals that's fantastic all right let's just get out of here and there we go we actually ended up losing only eight units and my pikemen did well my, my, i only lost six pikemen <laughs> that's not that bad that is pretty good okay so i'm gonna take a look at her because she is she's actually the leader oh that's that's interesting Okay, that is really, really interesting. Okay, so I will be letting her go then. There we go. Uh, this guy, I personally don't really care about this minor faction because it's it's one of those, you know? It's one of those. It's a bit weird. I'm not sure how to deal with minor factions, to be honest, because most of the time they are allied with some faction or another and you can't really negotiate with them. There is no chance to really get into a barter situation with them unless you speak to their leader and then you can kind of recruit them for your own means and then i think they do have a um a pretty large degree of freedom so they can pretty much go wherever wherever they want you know in that case so here's mr caladoc well what am i going to do with him well i'm going to be taking him prisoner of course yes we are going to be taking him prisoner 
and we're going to see what kind of money we can get for him. And I'm hopeful that it's going to be a pretty decent amount. If um, I, I'm, I'm going to, okay, so let, let's just say, what do you think we're going to get? I mean, there's 38 defenders here. I might as well go into Daldor and Castle and attempt to take it. I mean, I don't really, I don't really want to claim this for myself if I can help it anyway. But let's just, um, let's just have a little bit of a game here. How, how much do you think I'm going to get for this amount of units? And you can see here, look at all of the tiers. The tiers are all literal tier fives, right? They're all tier fives. There is even one tier six unit here. And we do have a uh, tier four as well. But most of them are tier fives and most are cavalry. And then on top of that, we have Mr. Caladog himself. So how much do you think that is actually going to be? How much do you think that's going to end up being? Because I personally think it's going to be an extreme amount. Are they really wanting to give me another fief? What is Durthart even doing? Isn't he supposed to be super greedy or something? Why is he doing this? I want you to have this, sir. <sighs> okay, yeah, he's giving it to me. Ah, uh, well, never mind. It's an easy way for me to get some charm skill, and I'm going to be maxing out my relation with Mr. Durthart here. Maybe that's the reason why he likes us so much, because I just have huge relation with him, and maybe that's the reason why he's giving me stuff. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I have a lot of support in the realm because I guess a lot of people like me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would like to be able to take this, but my engineering skill is so bad that uh, I'm not really able to. Let's actually spend a point in engineering while we still have the ability to do so. And here we go. We've finally gotten to 275. So I will be able to take the final skill, which is Immortal Charm. Every five skill points after 250 gives you plus one influence point per day. Personally, I think this is uh, one of the most useless skills ever, but um, it's it's okay. I mean, one influence or however much influence it actually ends up giving you is pretty decent. I mean, you can see here that we are currently losing a massive amount of influence because we have a huge amount of it already because there is diminishing returns, but it is giving me six. Yes, my charm skill is giving me six at the moment. Oh, wow, that's a large amount of units. I will be running away. Thank you. <laughs> I do not want to fight all of those guys, even though I could probably take them on. I could probably take them on, but I kind of want to find out how much we're going to get for Mr. Caladog before he manages to escape, which I assume is going to be quite soon. So, 16,000. Not bad. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it, definitely. And we're going to be selling a bunch of stuff as well. That's another 30,000 from that. And another 3,000 from the ranged and shields and all that stuff. So that is looking pretty good. Okay, so we've lost Daldorn Castle. But we have figured out that Melodia is the owner of Sionan. So if I am able to persuade him. So all I need to do basically is continue fighting him, releasing him. Giving, uh, giving ourselves decent relation increases as a result of us releasing him. And then we are going to be in a great position. Because that is going to enable us to do pretty much anything we want. Because as long as we get Sionan, or as long as we get him over here, that's what we want to do. Uh, hmm. I mean, I'd like to take it. You know, that's the main thing. I would like to take it. How, how many? Oh, I actually have... Okay, very good. I have a much larger party than I anticipated. I think my clan... Did level up recently, yes. It leveled up, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how recently it leveled up, but I do have quite a lot of space. So I'm hoping that maybe I can take some things here. Uh, I'm actually thinking maybe I should just take some random units here just to have some, but I don't really want to take them because they are not Vlandians. Okay, you know what? I'm going to end this episode off here. I'm going to go back to Vlandian territory. I'm going to pick up as many Vlandian units as I can get my hands on. I'm going to max out my units. And then I'll try to level them up with some auto-resolve battles against some caravans and looters and anything else I can get my hands on so we can level them up really fast. And then in the next episode, I will attempt to take Sionan. I think it might be possible with what we've been able to do so far, you know, defeating... Caladog's army when he had a much larger combat strength than us I think it might be might be okay we might be able to do it anyway I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time